I wish good things to you who's watching this. I am Alexi, and in a couple of minutes we're starting the first World Team Carcassonne Online Championship related event of the year. It is a friendly match between my team, Team Latvia and Team Poland. And the reason I'm recording this and not live, live streaming this is because I want to like later edit out all my blunders and uh, me stumbling upon words because I also need to pre prepare to the championship as a streamer. But if you're watching, this means I've kept only the good parts. And if I decided to post this, to post this, this means that the match was interesting enough. So there will be five best of three duels all played uh, in a standard time format. You can see the lineups on the screen and we'll start by following the duel of the two highest rated players from both teams, the Polish captain with the screen name MTW and Kriszkaut is from Latvia. And they have started. Of course, I missed the start. Well, just a couple of moves. The first moves are sort of natural, as usual. So red here, Krish playing with red meeples, as you see, also decent rating of 740. Still considered a master. They're doing really well. Scored a four-point city. They're about to finish one more city, so red probably... Oh, look at that! Again, so I did not predict that move, so now red is trying to block this green meeple over here. Whereas probably I would just consider building up this city, but red decides that they are going to play this aggressively. And I think a chance, if they want to follow up, they might even um, add the tile that they have in hand to the monastery below. But no! Oh, look at that move, man! Only 700 plus players do this kind of thing. So actually I really like this because even though it's uh, essentially blocks these two meeples or not blocks them but severely restricts them, it, was, it does so from both sides. Uh, and so this road of green cannot continue without adding more city points to red over here and over here. But red is not going to build up these squares. Red is going to go over here. Over here, over here, yeah, exactly. Red is planning to build a big ruin worth like 12 points or so and leave black, uh, leave green stranded with these three points. Green here has several ideas to consider. We could see an early farmer that would not be the, but I really like this move actually. So, what this does, it adds a monastery point in a way that also restricts this road. And look at red here, red trying to block with tempo so not just ways to move trying to block the sensitive square next to green's monastery but actually also taking points off his own and if anything red probably wants to draw a crossroads or something to score two points and at the same time block this sensitive square so a lot in this game will def will depend on this sensitive square which is why green did not hesitate well technically they did hesitate but uh, <laughs> only for a few seconds trying to defend this square so dropping this tile over here making it much harder for red to find a tile that can block this square so if anything red could probably use a triple city with a road, that would be the dream tile for red. But then there are many, many more saving tiles for green. So for example, green could draw any triangle with a turn and put it like this and save his city. Or, you know, green could always uh, draw the starting tile outright, like the, start, the tile that fits over here. That's always a possibility there. A few percentage points probability of that happening. In the meantime, red is starting a new road, green is starting a new city, so it looks like an even game. And we'll be able to tell who has the advantage only after the situation with the monastery square is resolved. If green manages to finish his city successfully, then green has the advantage in this game. Because once he puts this tile over here, 
a field meeple is coming over here for nine points which is likely to be the main field of the game but this is a really risky move by green which i do not necessarily like uh green is asking uh, red to finish this big city so green's idea is to save his road and uh, to try and build up the city in such a way that it's harder to complete. So green is hoping for a triple city with a road, and then maybe reconnect to the city or block it further. But it does appear that it will be too costly. So this move essentially was worth zero points, one road point for green and one point for red, but it does not guarantee the survival of this green meeple, yet this city cap could have been used productively elsewhere. For example, it's simply here finishing a city. So it does look like a very risky room for green, a move for green, but let's see what happens. Red now is probably considering some sort of road move or some blocking move, but I'm not going to try to predict Krish's move. He always comes out with something creative. So I know the move that I would play, I would go here and drop a farmer. So it would be a dual purpose move. Oh, let's go. Did I actually guess a move? Yeah, I, I, I got the placement, I did not guess the farmer. And the reason why I would have placed the farmer here is um, because Green can always draw the starting tile and drop a farmer himself. So I like dropping the farmer here in anticipation. So will we see finally a farmer? With every move played, the probability of Green drawing a starting tile on the next move goes up by a fraction of a percentage point but it still counts so now red is looking pretty good here and i'd expect red to continue building up his advantage on the other hand the meeple majority is something that green has and it is not to be discounted let's see if he can manage to put his meeples to good use but not yet as red at the same time continues his city and restricts green city and look at that the situation with a sensitive square is finally resolved in favor of green so there is now an 87 percent chance of green being able to draw this tile and complete his city and probably eventually his monastery let's see what happens to this shared square in the meantime, what Green also has going for him is this juicy, juicy piece of city, which can close extremely quickly because I see there are still five triangles remaining and one of them is in Green's hands. And will Green meeple the road? That's an interesting question. One, two, three, four, five. There's only four curves remaining. So if Green is, does want to meeple this road, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a wait. And also as for the simple curves, Green needs it here, Green needs it here, but Green decides that he cannot leave this road to red. In the meantime, Krish is getting eight points for a city and Green gets his meeple back. So this greedy move over here instantly paid off. And I have to say I rather like it, but it's a fantastic tile here for Krish. But he does not use it in the way I thought he would. That is surprising for me. If anything, my initial move would be to attack the city, kind of try to equalize this. But I think that Red decided that there's one more divider anyway. And if Red attacks the city with a splitter tile, kind of like this, then Green can get a second splitter tile as unlikely as it may be and finish his own city and leave red with only four points. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. Green also likes some blocking. So this square is getting very sensitive. They are all, there's only one starting tile remaining, by the way, which is why red decides to save the square as there are still five straight lines remaining. So an almost certainty, like a 97% chance that Red will be able to free up his road meeple over here. But this square is now getting restricted, only two tiles remaining, and it is still possible to completely block that square. 
However, it will be not that easy for green because green, uh, if let's say he starts blocking from this side, then he will be making his own city vulnerable. And if he starts blocking from this side, then reds can place a tile over here as an indirect defense against this potential blocking square and start at the same time a blocking attack on this city. So another situation with a couple of sensitive squares But instead, red decides to block over here, which also makes sense. Green, in the meantime, draws one of the tiles that fit in this hole for red. Red is not very happy about it because this means that there is only a 50% chance uh, at most. That is, if green doesn't try to block, uh, there is a 50% chance of red getting his meeple back. At the same time, there is only a 50% chance of this meeple coming back because red drew starting tiles here and here, quite a fortunate draw for them. But now green is only one tile away from completing his city and probably taking over the lead into this game. Will we see it? And also, do they add a city point now and make their city vulnerable to attack, but they add themselves potentially to a point and uh, give themselves more closing tiles with which they can close the city rapidly. I think you shouldn't. I think what green should do is probably place the triangle over here and start attacking this square at the same time restricting the square which red can use for blocking. Or call me crazy but not the worst move in the world is placing the triangle like this and leaving yourself two triple city tiles with a road. And the idea is that red, let's see what red does now. I'm pretty sure red's gonna go over here and guarantee the block of a meeple because the idea is there's only one starting tile remaining, but if green needs it over here and over here, green can only save one of the meeple and even if green gets that tile, he'll have a Sophie's choice to make. I actually, I really like these Sophie's choice blocks. They're very powerful because you don't need to spend extra tiles. Yeah, and th there we go. Look at this efficient move. Not only blocking, but also starting a new city. And you see why these blocks are so powerful. If the number of the squares that need the same tile exceeds the number of that tile remaining, red does not have to spend extra tiles and moves on completing the block. So let's say once red completes the city, he will not have to go over here. So these blocks are usually very efficient if you can manage to accomplish them. Interesting that red chose not to take two points, but instead save the 50% chance of getting his meeple back. And I agree with red in this case because the two points don't contribute as much to red's win probability as the 50% chance of getting a meeple back with eight extra points, three points for the field and five extra points for the city because this three point city will become an eight point city when completed and also in some scenarios red could have meeple this road instantly after completing red is trying to block green city now the question is should green defend and the answer is no here actually i'm not sure about this one because you see if you place the monastery over here, which is definitely a move that green is considering, then you restrict your own city to only a couple of tiles. There's one of those remaining and there is one splitter. So you will have two tiles only left to finish the city. However, it restricts your city to a lesser extent than, than your opponent would. Because if your opponent, in this case red, draws a straight line, and there's a good chance that he'll do so because there are at least four straight lines remaining. 
there will be only one tile remaining to finish a city, which is why Green chooses a counterattack instead. And now Red will have to choose between starting a 50% block over here or defending over here or simply abandoning all ideas and just taking three points for the road. Ideally, also, what Red would like to do is put a road then tile over here to pre-build a finished road next to Red City so that in the event that Red draws this critical tile that fits in this square, Red would be able to meeple that road and instantly get a meeple back with six points. But Red instead decides to block so spent already five points worth on tiles, just improving his win probabilities. And these two red meeples are now officially blocked. But it doesn't matter because look at this. Red's block was very timely because green had the tile in hand to free up this meeple. But now it doesn't work anymore. And look at that. And red draws the final tile that fit over here and i as the commentator hereby declare this city meeple deceased with a meager seven points which looks like it's not going to be sufficient to win in order for green to win a lot of good things would need to happen I would imagine the starting tile and maybe the curve and then some sort of block and then if green were to have the meeple majority again green would be able to take over this not nine but potentially 12 point field well okay nine point field that's a good city restriction here but it does not matter because a coin flip comes Red's way and Red even meeples the pre-built road for himself because there's still a couple of road end tiles remaining and even without road end tiles remaining you can finish this road with two curves pretty easily. Actually something that Red must have had in mind as well when placing this road end over here. It is quite unfortunate for green that this meeple had stayed here for so long but do remember at the time of placing this meeple there were four curves remaining and all the road ends for example this road end uh, green needed somewhere else and uh, red just draws fantastic tiles sometimes that just happens in carcassonne and there's not much you can do about it so there was a 12 percent chance of that happening and red's master plan for this game was simply drawing all the three tiles that fit in this square, which is also incidentally the tile that fits in this square. And all green can do now is just cry. So you see, that's the secret of Carcassonne Masters. You just gotta sign a deal with board game arena developers and wait for good things to happen. As green here, I'm not sure what to do, but as red here, you could probably drop a city cap in your field or do this, which I really like because it's defending the square. It takes away blocking tiles from green. And if green wants to block this meeple, he would be forced to place the triangle here and add extra points to red which at this point doesn't look particularly tempting so if anything at this point the only way how we can see green winning this game is just hoping that green gets every single possible tile that they need including the city caps that go here even though that there are still as many as three city caps remaining which is why he decides not to take chances and simply add the two points to red but block the square. And look at that. Red's master's plan over here. He'll get a meeple back 
without having to draw a rodent tile. Speaking of rodent tiles, green has one in hand, and in all likelihood will expect it going here and taking two more points and now hoping to win the flip for the city cap. So if they're the first to draw the city cap, then uh, they will be doing more or less all right, but it does not matter because immediately red gets a meeple back. And look at that, eight point road completely out of nowhere. Well, the one flip that green managed to win for the measly four points over here, but it's something. And green's block over here also paid off because red did draw one of the tiles that fit here. So what does red do here? Maybe go here or here or drop something in their field. But that doesn't make much sense because look at that farmer, which is uh, something that I missed. You know, green meeple, harder to notice. That's actually a great move because it has two connection points through a monastery over here or through a curve over here and both of these types of tiles still exist so this connection is virtually unblockable wait a second no it isn't because <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight nine nine curves all out so nothing fits in this square but at least green manages to get the tile here probably thinking whether to meeple the monastery and the answer does appear to be no because there might be an opportunity to connect to the field again with a second meeple which is something that they absolutely should do and the way i see this happening is let's look at straight roads one two three four uh, five, six, seven, eight. No, it doesn't work. Nothing works. Which is why they decided just to meeple the monastery for maximum point. And look at this build up. This is just incredible how Red managed to complete this monastery. That part of the game, however, I'm pretty sure is not luck. It's something that Red had calculated in the way he built up his monastery. As you see, there was one more tile like this remaining and, uh, it's going to be completely lights out in this game. So the players are collecting the final bits of points. And that's going to be it. Maybe instead of this me meepling this monastery, Possibly green could have tried connecting to the field through this monastery through here But the field is actually only worth Nine points whereas the monastery is worth seven points Which is pretty much close enough. Yeah, pretty one-sided game So let the players continue now. I'm going to move to a different duel Actually, let's just check these scores for everything real quick as you see 94 65 here so pretty one-sided win only denver oh they won the first game with only one point i guess we have to watch their second game but let me just check the other players so one one isn't it with the polish player with the screen name vietabrud which i think is in swedish like it's literally wheat bread well anyway in the meantime, KR is up 1-0. So let's look at the decider duel between the player with the screen name Apple G and the Polish player with the Swedish screen name. So I'm just going to call him the Swedish player. And look at that. They are playing so incredibly fast and this game looks like it's really headed green's direction especially after this monastery so let's see what's happening here 20 points ahead on the scoreboard but green in all likelihood with 87 percent chance will get their meeple back at some point 
And now look at this. Yellow is playing their last meeple to farm. If they are going to do this, aha, uh -huh, that makes sense because they are trying to attack the main farm which belongs to green. Again, very not obvious. Green meeple should be banned. Also, interestingly, I recently saw a post about colors on Board Game Arena from a colorblind player and it's actually opened my eyes as to how ridiculous the color system is. Like, imagine if you are, I forgot the scientific name, but like if, if you are have the most common type of color blindness where you can't tell apart reds and green, well, then you're screwed <laughs> in a Carcassonne game. I mean, even like if you're not colorblind, because I'm not colorblind myself, it, this green versus green, it's almost impossible. But back to the game. So, Yellow does spend her last meeple on connecting to the field, which I do not necessarily agree with. But, you know, you, you, you can play like this. She has to risk. Uh, and as a result of this connection, look at the seven-point road. And who can snatch that seven-point road? Probably the player who has meeples, and that is green with a massive, massive lead. However, what could happen, and what I think Yellow is hoping for, is that she gets this tile first, and then she gets this. Which is, you know, not impossible. And another thing that Yellow has going for her, potentially, is the fact that this tile and this tile could give her a city. And that's a 25% chance of that happening. In the meantime, yellow successfully managed to block green's field entry. However, this green meeple will be stuck comfortably with six points, potentially nine, if the city gets finished. But finally, red draws her tile without missing too much value. So it looks like this meeple paid off. Well, she did lose a couple of city caps, but it does appear to have been worth it. So what red could do, red could easily come back into this game by either taking over the field or winning a couple of coin flips, but not this one necessarily because a nine point move here for green is huge. So green did appear to draw critical tiles. No, that was your win condition. It belongs here. Oh, that was green style. And the road was uh, yellows. Yeah, never mind, never mind. I just I just missed the the moves completely. Of course, yellow would have loved to place this tile over here, uh, but now it will not be possible. Well, I mean, yellow will still place the tile over here just to score the extra five city points, but the dream of completing this city is not going to materialize. However, like r yellow can still do something in this game. Yellow can actually try to fight for the big field. Green is saying, give me a moment, please, trying to calculate his remaining moves, and that makes sense. I forgot to remind my teammates that a loss on time is considered a loss. Even if you're just a couple of seconds below zero, that's it, game over for you. I'm pretty sure green will come up with a move on time. So what are some potential field connections? There's a field connection. Okay, so three, three tiles remaining. I think as yellow, what you do is you create some sort of field connection or do you just yellow it and drop a field meeple here? Because there is one more tile that fits here, right? I see one on the board, this one. Imagine how it goes over here. And I see this one. But there's one more left. So what if... I'm sure that yellow is considering this. Yellow goes here and tries to connect through this tile. The question is, does yellow even have to do this? Because maybe yellow can hope for this tile instead, and then yellow will be leading because of this ruin. Well, this ruin is just slightly over this monastery. It's going to be quite a close game. But I think the idea here is that by dropping a farmer here, 
Yellow could maximize his meeple chances, so Yellow decided not to do that uh, while it turned out quite all right for Yellow because Yellow got unsuccessful in getting this tile and this move here was huge for Green and potentially game winning because Green got not four but seven points with this tile because you gotta remember about this field meeple. Well at least uh, yellow won the final coin flip for this tile, so she got actually very wisely in the last. So she got six points with her last two meeples, and then six points more over here. So I think it's going to be quite a close game, but because of that seven-point move, I believe that the Polish Swedish player will have it. Very interesting end game here. Both players have chances. Yeah, plus ten for the Swedish player, so maybe even this tile was not enough, maybe even a desperate attempt to attack this field was necessary, but we know that it would not have worked. So congratulations to the Polish player, we know that they're up 2-1, so they won with this duel, and Poland is up 1-0 in the match. Let's have a look at some other games. Nope, not this one, this one. So they are playing their second game against the Polish player with the screen and Belzebub, who is a really, really fast player. So they're not at risk on losing on time. However, it does appear that they're maybe not taking the maximum out of this time format. I've played uh, with the play with the red meeples at like at least 50 games and they're always really, really fast. But let's see if they are acting the same when they are in a tournament. Black is doing pretty well here. But Red decided to finish a shared city and a shared road and at the same time unify his field. That's actually what the P Polish player does a lot. So he sometimes occupies the field uh, with two, sometimes three meeples. Uh, hoping that they keep control of the field, have a lot of points, and win the game that way. And that's where the game is headed, as it seems, because red is at plus nine, red is up one meeple. And red has also 12 points with these farmers, which are not easy to combat. So possibly the way you combat this as a black. You wait with the field a little bit. Actually, you know what? Maybe as black. There's several win strategies. So first of all, you probably should take care of your meeples. Like you should finish this road. You should finish the city. Actually, never mind this road. Uh, th this meeple, we don't care about him. We care about this. We care about this. So black gets a city cap. Black gets a city splitter. And then black has some more city points. So what Black choose, chose to do now is start a new road, which is pretty interesting, that's aggressive scoring. And I think the idea of Black is to go like this and like this. Another win strategy potentially is to say, you know what, you have two meeples, I don't care, I'm gonna have three meeples. And even though Black is at a meeple minority with four meeples, well he had four before the previous move, it's not unheard of to still win the field. Farmer here, farmer here, farmer here, everything connects, city cap, drop a farmer, city cap, drop a farmer, and then... Black can try to win the game that way. And we got news from the other final Latvian player who won the game 2-0. We'll have a look at that duel a bit later. But now we know that the score in the match is tied. Now Belzy here. What will they do? Will they attack the city with a third people indirectly, that's doable. Although this opens some interesting possibilities. Imagine if Red gets this, yep, and they do that, they do that. And as Black, do you just finish your shared city to get out of harm's way? Or do you wait for the splitter still? 
Or do you somehow try to block here? Yeah, yeah, this is what I like. I, I... Going here and then threatening the square from this side. And the idea of doing this is that actually you would be also finishing your own road without a road end. But instead, it was a difficult situation to be in, but it does look like Black succumbed to the pressure and was forced to add two points. Well, one point, but potentially two points to red and potentially finish the city just to get out of harm's way. Well, as black, you kind of have to take care of your road. By the way, this road would have ta would have been taken care of already. Look at these two tiles. So juicy. Yeah, I think maybe this move was a bit premature. Like, you, you can definitely see that. But given that black is behind, black probably had to risk a little bit more. And maybe get a quadruple city tile and try to win a mini battle of 7 points here versus like 5 points with these two meeples. So it does feel like there were further opportunities. Now as black, what you do? Maybe you go here, maybe you go here. Lots of good moves potentially. You could also go here and even drop a Desperate Farmer, although I'm not a fan of that at this stage in the game. But you could do that. You could also go here and connect, or you could also go here and block. Probably I prefer the latter, actually. Because it does feel like we need to amass some points. Oh, look at that. That's quite a nice move. So several purposes. One, they're pre-finishing their road. Now they know, don't need a road, then they need a curve. They're also starting a new city and they are preparing to take a city cap, drop a farmer. A standard approach, typically quite dangerous, needs to be... Okay, so we go here, we drop a farmer, right? I think that's doable. Red didn't try to stop us. I mean, there's an alternative, actually, if you want to play... <gasps> no, 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 there's another very efficient move. What if we go here and point the city cap here and we're threatening two things? We're threatening to take over the city completely because there's still one. There's still two. Ah, missed opportunity. There's still two triple cities with the road here. And you, and also you're threatening to block. I think this may have been missed. Because look at, uh, with this tile in hand, red would have to react to this threat. But I can't blame black for trying a different when condition trying something with the field but of course now he reacts and now he actually blocks this meeple not permanently but it makes it harder so now black creates a blocking platform and an attacking platform against this city uh, red cannot do anything about it probably red can just continue his city or something i don't know which i would do if i were red or just drop a third farmer. However, look at the scoreboard. Black somehow managed to get 10 more points. And I'll tell you how this efficient scoring, this was this road was such a nice find. Essentially, Black managed to get six points from spending only one pure road tile. Because look at these other two tiles. Uh, black put cities and all the other tiles here well they were already on the board and also black now draws a crucial crucial tile over here and now black is very much in this so if black just equalizes the field they're doing pretty well so instead of going here which we can do later we don't have to be impatient we have to go here and drop a farmer. I also like this insurance farmer. Look at that. So the idea is if you finish the city, then 
I uh, connect to the field. And now as black, this tile presents so many opportunities. I'm just going to list several productive moves. One, complete the connection, score two points. I think it's a bit too weak because we can do it later. One, simply score three points. Then we go here or drop a farmer. I think the strongest move is to go here and drop a farmer. But let's see if black actually realizes this. Another strong move is to go here. Pre-building a road and then when you complete your city, you do lose these points, but you get a meeple into the farm and you get this long, long road as compensation. And he goes for what I think is the strongest move, is attacking the field with a third meeple. You know, when you have so many meeples to spare, why not just do that? But now that I think about this, is there an even sufficient number of road tiles to connect? I do see straight lines, a lot of straight lines over here. It does appear that there are a couple. So black can complete their connection probably go here meeple the five point road i think we now have to try everything or can we block this field and it does not appear so because one two three four five six seven eight nine, wait yes we can yes we can one two three four five six seven eight nine so if black now puts this tile over here, this meeple is dead. On the other hand, black needs to draw multiple row tiles in order to get his own meeple. And the question is, will that even be possible? Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oof, and the answer appears to be no. However, look at this. No, 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 no. Four dagger tiles. So actually, they're road tiles with a piece of city on it. And so here, you need one type of city with a road. Here, you need another type of city with a road. And uh, here, you need a city with a piece of road as well. It does look like a complicated situation. Or you could also drop a fourth farmer right here, but he goes for the block and I like it and it works. Brilliant find here by Black, the new Latvian team member, one of the new Latvian team members. We actually had quite a lot of changes this year. So as Red, what do you even do? I know what you do. You go here and you drop a farmer and you hope for the one remaining monastery. Or that's it, just the one remaining monastery. But actually, the reason why this move is so powerful, it's not that it gives you 50% for the connection, is that it multiplies all your opponent's probabilities of success by one half. Because now, in order to win, your opponent, in this case black, would need to draw this connection, this connection, this connection, or at least draw two out of three. And in addition to that, they found the move. They would need to draw the monastery. So, but let's see what happens. Now, again, a lot of different things we can do with five tiles remaining. I think we could probably get this farmer in and then hope to either get these two tiles. Yeah, we would, we would just need two out of three, right? We would need one connection another connection or the monastery. So we only have to equalize the field. So I believe that the move here for black is to go here. And by the way, connect not this meeple, but this meeple, because we'll be able to do this later. They only have one minute and 20 seconds on the clock. They should spend now almost all of their time on this decision. We're way past the point of getting a meeple back. It looks like the field will be pretty important. One, two, three, four. We have a lot of cities on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, actually. No, no, seven. It's 21 points for the field. 
But do we have fieldless win conditions? It's something that we can consider. It does not appear so. And I think that they find the strongest move here. If I were black, I might have considered actually meepling something here. So here as red, you take this fantastic tile, you meeple the road as well, probably. And it's even a question of who wins this game. So red is not doing very well because red lost this coin flip over here. And now what needs to happen for the Latvian player to win? Uh, they could simply meeple a monastery. I think this is the best play. It's not like they need another farm or anything. As they almost guaranteed to tie. They could drop another one just in case, but it's not like they will need uh, <laughs> much to connect. They could uh, meeple a monastery here, they could meeple a monastery here. They actually just need to make sure that they still win the game if they equalize in points, which is not a given, it's not a given. They still need to draw either this or this which they have 75% chance of doing, and they just decide to go for points. So maybe Red will drop a Farmer here, but it does look like it won't do that much. It will only give them three points because this square is dead. Nothing goes into this square. Interestingly, probably as Red, you really can't do that much. You just probably... <gasps> You drop this here, and you drop another farmer, and you hope for the city cap. So then you get 12 points over here for this farmer. Maybe that actually could be enough for red to win. Maybe that's their win condition. And here's the idea. Check this out. So I hope that they don't find this move, because obviously I'm rooting for my team. But we go here, here. We drop a farmer. Now, black draws this, meeples the road, gets into the field, but equalizes the city, and it gives us red a meeple back. So with our final tile, we hope for these six points. But I think red did not find this, and it does look like black is about to win this game. So now they even have a 50% chance at taking over this field. It does seem that Red had to hope for the 33 percenter and they go here. And they're probably thinking whether to meeple this road. The answer appears to be no and they win the final coin flip. This is incredible. So Black chose the win condition of <laughs> winning the field with three meeples and somehow that worked. Of course, a lot of good things had to happen, even though Red found this brilliancy and managed to have the probabilities that Black had. Black said, I'm just going to draw the tiles anyway. Of course, Black did have to find the opportunities. And in fact, Black didn't have to draw this tile to win. I think they would be winning just because of this mini battle and because of this three-point farmer, which equalizes this three-point farmer. And also, what a brilliant block over here. I think that was an important find, finding the prior prioritization, doing proper tile counting, and realizing that these two dagger tiles would be available to get at least one of these meeples in. Yeah, you look, so it was plus two for black even before the fields were connected. Long story short, uh, Black would have won as well because Black only got 24 extra points for the field because three of these points were already here. But yeah, congrats to my teammates and the newcomer to the Latvian team on winning 2-0. So Latvia is now up 2-1. Let's now have a look at the two remaining duels. We have our main game of the evening. Let's see how Krish is doing and how uh, they're playing they're still on their second game, so we might have a look at the ending. Aha, uh 1-1 -huh, over here, so we have the decider here. I guess we're gonna watch the decider first, and we're gonna watch Krish's game later. I just gotta respond first to my teammates, who is saying that they started the game with the wrong settings, but... 
well, I guess it is what it is, right? Yeah, as you see, so they forgot about the slow time format. In the actual championship, the result would be deemed void, regardless of who wins. But it, since it's a friendly match, we'll just have to go with it. Interesting position here. Oh, and uh, Chris is saying that he won his duel. So, like that, Latvia wins the match because the score is now 3-1. And it could be 4-1 because Red is looking pretty well. Looking pretty good here. I mean, they're at plus 18 on the scoreboard. Even that alone, it looks all right. In addition to that, they have a six-point monastery, which they should be happy with. They have a six-point ruin, which they should be happy with, because there are tiles that give points both to the ruin and to the monastery and to the road. So Red is looking forward to drawing the one remaining triple city tile or something that fits here. Um, but look at that. Ah, oh, what an aggressive move. I rather like it. So Red is going for a big field fight, which I'm not sure how I feel about actually, because Red does not have that many meeples in the reserve and they could easily lose this game. Um, but again, it could work. Like, Red currently has more meeples in the fields. Why not secure the field? So Red could just go here, for example, and block off the field from further attacks. What a brilliant find. I really like this move. So instead of just taking a couple points over here, it looks like Red completely clinches the game. And also, this meeple does seem to work well as well. Even though it's a bit risky in terms of your meeple count, right? Red is kind of uh, opening up the field for further attacks and also expanding the field by adding an extra point and also creating a point for, for extra monastery which could give nine points to one of the sides, whoever draws it. But because of the field is fairly restricted, it does seem that Black will not be able to utilize his meeple majority. So if Black goes here... That's an option, actually, they could just connect through a curve, score 4 points, score 9 points. Now look at that, Black was trying to create a field connection, which is why as Red maybe just go here. And block everything. Because as Red, you have to be careful, right, you only have one meeple. An alternative is simply adding 2 points to your incompleted features going here, pre-building a road and stuff. So now at least Black will be able to take advantage of the splitter and now it's a game changer because you see I didn't comment on that city because I just assumed that they would be shared. But the city splitter was still existent and Red using this style could have completed the connection but Black because Black created another threat of com connecting to the field Red was forced to react. A very, very nice move here. Protecting the field. Black now goes all out on the field. And so they should, even though they're eight points ahead on the scoreboard. Actually, yeah, if they, if they equalize the field, they probably win. But not anymore. It's a huge eight point city and a farmer as well to equalize this field. I don't know what you need to do as red. I know. Ooh, what a brilliant find. Because you know what happens here? Monastery with the road. And this is tied. Now all bets are off in this game. Because these extra 12 points for a strategically placed farmer will serve black quite well. So as red here, I think what you should do is you simply should complete the connection. Prepare the 9-point monastery spot and make sure that this square does not get blocked. So, currently, Red has the meeple majority here on the field. However, by getting two more meeples in with the road monastery, and for content, we're going to assume that that's exactly what's going to happen. No, you have to, you have to drop another one! Ah, uh, I think... I think Black may have missed a brilliancy here. 
Yes. As black, you drop another farmer so that the monastery with which you connect gets three of your guys in. Because, like, black's not winning without the monastery anyway, I think. Why not just drop a farmer? Like, you're not going to need to use anything else. It does look like an oversight here from black. And the idea here is that we're running out of road tiles and... Red wants to get his meeple in, but he does not seem to get to draw a straight line because there's zero left or a curve because there are two left. Well, there's still two left. There is, however, no crossroads. And look at that. Black must be kicking himself because Black would have had four meeples in now and he would have had clinched this game. On the other hand, maybe Black has it anyway, so it'll be very close. Black will get this monastery and just decides to meeple. Red can't do much except complete the connection. Because Red had to at least tie the field, right? It's 3-3 at the moment. And as Red, there's really all... not at all as that much what we can do but let's count up the points right so these two monasteries essentially cancel each other out but black has it black has the road black has the 12 point field so it does look like black is winning this game i think it would have been more spectacular with the meeple over here again so same idea but just more secure, because maybe now, does only Denver have a field connection? Does he go over here? Let's see. No more monasteries, no more curves, no more weights. One, two, three, four. There's a triangle. If I'm not hallucinating, if we go here, we connect to the field, there's a triangle. And it does look like we have to connect to the field because black has too many points. Again, had black had a farmer here, this would not have been an issue for black. But it does look like red has some outs. Okay, let's go. Ah. The city. So did red decide that... There was a monastery as well. So red missed a field connection. Red actually missed a 50... Wait, 66 times 50. Yeah, red missed a 33 percenter basically here. Right, so Polish player with this road monastery managed to win against the Latvian expert who, look at this, was over 600 already. But it doesn't matter, because we win still. Three against two, and the victors in this match are the players with a screen name. Krishna Norbert, 96, and KIR. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed this commentary. At least it was a close match, and I'm trying to become less rusty as a commentator before the big event, the World Team Carcassonne Online Championship, which is starting in April. That's a taster for what the duels are going to be like, but of course I will have also special guests in the studio. Be sure to meeple the like button and subscribe for more matches like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you soon.